Yes, Derbyshire has seen the biggest fall in police stations open to the public. In 2010, there were 25. Now there are just four. That's a fall of more than 80%. Uh, meanwhile, in West Mercia, there were 31 stations open to the public in 2010. Now there are just six. And in 2008, there were 149 police stations and front counters in London. But by 2016, that had dropped down to 73. Now more than half of those are being closed, with just 37 left, which includes one, just one 24-hour front counter in every borough. Well, for our next guest, that prospect is an extremely worrying thought, and he certainly knows what can be involved in this. A warning, you may find this next picture really distressing. Paul Collar was the victim of a brutal and savage attack at his South London home three years ago and believes the quick response from his local police station helped save his life and now his campaign to stop these police stations being closed. Uh, Paul joins us uh, now. Paul, thank you very much for joining us uh, this morning. Um, the very police station now that helped you is being earmarked for closure. Uh, you put down the fact that they came from so close to your house uh, for the reason that you're still alive today. That's right, they came within eight minutes. Uh, had they been a minute or two later, I think I'd probably be dead by now. So what happened to you? Just remind us briefly. It was a late one night, wasn't it? Someone knocked on your door. There's a knock at the door. Mm. Four chaps burst through the door, mm. started beating me. My wife was upstairs. My daughter was at the top of the house. They held down my wife. My daughter heard what was happening, rang the police, and within eight minutes they got there. And two coppers rushed through the door and saved me. And they were just about to hit you, weren't they, with a big wooden... They, yes, they'd been kicking me everything. They had a mm. huge wooden uh, door and they were about to bring down on my head just as the chat, so the police will grab So seconds him. from... Yes. Yeah, disaster. Exactly. So when you look at these closures, um, who do you blame for them? Well, I don't just blame Sadiq. Mm. I realise that the government has cut a billion pounds of funding from the Metropolitan Police. That's ridiculous. But equally, his approach, this binary approach whereby he just closes down certain stations without thinking through how he deals with this problem, seems utterly simplistic. <laughs> I mean, the budget's been cut since 2010. Um, it's had been reduced by 600 million, reduced by, and a further 400 million has to go from the Met Police budget by 2021. I mean, it's, it will be hard, you say, I haven't really thought it through, but it will be hard to see how you could make those savings. And I, I'm it. not defending those cuts. Those mm. cuts are clearly wrong, and the Conservative government should be held, held to account mm. for that. But equally, given that problem, given the, the role he has, mm. he has to think it through. Mm. And just to simply say, I'll cut this station, keep that station, sometimes in a rather partisan way, that's far too simplistic. It, it also, just 8% of crimes were reported at police front counters in 2016, uh, down from 22% in 2000. Which could reflect the, the, the shortage of, of front counters as well. But people aren't reporting crime uh, in, like we used to report crime, uh, Paul. And that's a, that's, a, that's a big change, isn't it? Indeed. And it's not all about front counters. Having a police station in your community is a symbol of safety. Police stations do far more than just afford you a place to go and report crime. They're there so that they're in the community, so that they can get to you quickly if there's an emergency. So the fact that it front counters is the issue, that's not the issue. It's far deeper than that. So one of the arguments that um, the Met Police have made is that actually, more often than not, is the quote, um, police aren't coming from actual police stations when the call goes in. They are going from perhaps patrol cars or they're in the air anyway. So it's less about the stations it's more about the volume of police in the area. And that's what they say. I looked up the figures. Mm. They reckon at the moment 50% of a, a policeman's time is spent in the police station. So you know often they are there. The happen chance of a patrol car being near you, it might save you one day. But in my case, had there not been a patrol car in the vicinity, Mitcham, where mm. my station is now going to be, is 20 minutes away. Exactly. I'd be dead now. There's mm. a stark reality there for you, clearly, that, that is very tangible. What, um, what is the answer then, Paul? Mm. How, what would you like to see them try and do? I would like to to think it through. OK, so there, there are the cuts. Maybe a smaller station in Wynwood and a smaller station in Mitcham. Thinking it through, maybe a bigger station somewhere outside. But people need a police station in the heart of their community. If you believe in policing by consent, you need the police within our community. OK. So very strong argument and just looking mm -hmm. at those images of you and what yeah. you went through should make anybody think twice, shouldn't they? Yeah. 
Thanks very much. Good to talk to you this A morning. spokesperson for the Mayor of London said these closures are the result of government cuts since 2010, which means police officer numbers in London are falling and have left the Mayor with no choice in order to save an additional £8 million a year. But as Paul was just pointing mm. out, having a police station at the heart of any community is a very important symbol. Paul Collar, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you.